I'm so happy to be here. Um, let me help her do the introduction properly. Um, I'm Chichi Omesaka, Chinemema Omesaka, and um, I'm a very passionate person when it has to do with teenagers. I'm a teenage coach. But first, I, lo I love to introduce myself as a wife, committed wife, <laughs> and a mother of four kids. And I'm 34. <laughs> Thank you. I'm heading somewhere. Don't, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm heading somewhere. At 34, forgive me, let me use the word God. God has brought me this far. But you know, most times we like to use the word God to say, you know, God is, is God, is this. But until you become intentional about whatever decision you want to do, whatever decision or whatever thing you want to do with yourself, if you don't come to that point where you are taking responsibility for your actions, nothing actually happens. The God factor definitely is there, but someone has to make something happen. So as um, at 34, a, a wife, married for almost 13 years, October will be 13 years. I know some people will be asking, did you marry as a teenager? <laughs> I married at 21. <laughs> and um, at 30, I had my four kids. And God has been, yeah, forgive me, I'm going to use the word very often, God. And I've gotten to this point where, you know, being a TV presenter, using my profession, I'm a journalist by training, using my profession to, you know, reach out to teenagers, communicate to them, because I realized just like the, um, you know, the video we watched, this is the age of information. So a lot of our teenagers are using the information. Some are using it rightly, some are not, you know, misusing it, abusing it. And I decided I was going to use what I studied. So being a, a TV presenter, a radio presenter too, I, I have um, my radio show on Inspiration FM in Lagos and then on Fuller FM, you know, my, I know some of us know Fuller FM. And everything I do is with teenagers. They host the show with me. And that was just me trying to guide them using what they love. You, if, you, if you agree with me, a lot of our teenagers, they want to be celebrities. They want to be known, they want to be heard. And for me, it's just channeling their energy into something very positive. You know, so I am also, let me not forget to mention that one, I'm special advisor to the Abia State Governor. And then for me, it is something that I find very interesting because I'm the first, this is the first, you know, of its kind. I believe a lot of people don't even understand what it means to handle teenagers. I'm working from the angle of, you know, I've been doing this for so many years. A lot of times people just want to focus on the youth or the children and they forget this, this um, you know, people at the center. And we are losing them gradually. You know, so for the state governor to say, I want someone to focus on this set of people. I think it's something very remarkable. And I'm not trying to promote him here, but I'm saying they are the future, just like she introduced. They are the future, and the future is now. If we don't take charge of their lives, if we don't help them to focus on what is more important than the social media, the, you know, the different things they are doing, just like if, if you see on this, street courtism is something that is taking over our society. We see a lot of our primary school, I'm not even talking about secondary school, our primary school kids, they are getting involved into courtism. And then for me being part of government, I'm not a politician and I, I, I always say it, and I'm a catalyst, I'm there to just deliver something that is very, very, very key. And you know, it's also, it has to do with delivering our generation, the next leaders of this great nation or our society. You know, so, I've tried to lay the background of um, what I do. This is part of the things I do as special advisor. I've been able to do um, talk about sexual assault, and this is something for me is personal because I'm a, I don't want to use the word um, victim. I'm a survivor of rape, sexual assault, and it's also something that I'm going to talk about later. I could have become, you know. I could have allowed it to put me down and say, okay, I'm a victim. I'm going to allow this thing to make me not live my life fully. But I am stepping on these things to say, I can become more. I can be something more. And I can become something I needed as a teenager when I was a teenager and I never had. That is what I'm doing for these teenagers. You know, so these are some of the things that we did. Um, you know, giving out sanitary pads. I remember being a teenager, not being able to have enough you know, money to buy to afford some of these things. And we are 
doing this, going to different places to talk about. Okay, enough of that. Okay, just recently, two days ago or three days ago, we did, um, I was able to organize a town hall meeting for governor to have an interface with teenagers and let them ask them. This is where some of the things I really wanted growing up as a teenager. I wanted to meet my governor or the president and just ask very key questions. And, you know, I didn't get the opportunity, but to the glory of God, I'm doing that for these teenagers. So, the beginning of my journey. How did I get here? At the age of 15, I decided to take my life into my hands. I realized everybody just sees me as a pretty face. And for me, I know I'm more than a pretty face. There's something more. I could feel it inside, inside of me, right from time. So when I go out and people just keep calling me Oyibo, or all they want to do is just take advantage of me, I realized I had to do something. Because if I don't do something, if I get into the university, I was just going to become a piece of cake to guys. So I decided to take my life into my hands. And I sat down, and I started writing. One of the things you would do for yourself, I know, I don't, I'm not sure I'm seeing teenagers here. There are no teenagers, but I also believe there are a lot of our young people. I mean, they are in their 20s because I work with a lot of teenagers and young adults. In their 20s, they have no clue where they are heading to. They have, am, am I correct? Am I, am I making sense? They, they have no clue where, you know, we are heading to. And for me, it was one of the biggest things I had to do. Biggest things I had to do. I just had to sit down and ask myself, who are you? I had to discover myself. I had to, you know, ask myself very critical questions. I'm, I'm not just a pretty face. You know, there's more to this. God gave me this face, not just for, you know, I don't know why, but I had to use it wisely. And I, I'm trying to encourage someone here. There's more to your story. There's more to you. You need to sit down, take pen and, you know, and paper. That was what I actually did at age 15. I sat down and I started writing down. Why am I here? What is the purpose? Why did God create me? I'm not a mistake. You know, so the moment you get to that point where you discover yourself and you start asking critical questions, it's going to help you to find focus. It will help you to just you know, become very purpose-driven. You will stop living endlessly. I became very intentional. You know, it, it's one step to ask critical questions. It's another thing to say, how do I go from here? And for me, I just started telling myself, okay, I need to be very strategic strategic about my life. I needed to just do things very carefully. Because I believe, you know, life is about sowing seed. It's just like famine. What you sow today, you're going to reap it in three years from now, in five years from now, in ten years from now. For me, it was just being intentional, writing. Where do I see myself? At that age 15, I said at 17, 18, I, I, I would have to get to the university. You know, yeah, that's me setting goals with deadline. I told myself I was going to, you know, I was saying I want to do this, but I, I was putting deadlines, you know, putting, you know, dates to them. And I said at 17, 18, I have to get into the university. At 20, I want to be a graduate. That sounds crazy, yeah. At 20, you know, yeah, the same 20, I will graduate and then get married and then have my four kids at 25. Sounds very crazy. I mean, you're wondering, are you going to be having kids every year? But that was, that was, they were the sad things I wrote. I said, I just want to take my life into my hands. And doing that, I think, not I think, I know was the biggest thing I did for myself. Because as I got into the university, I was just very focused. No boyfriends. No, I'm, you know, I'm not here to judge you. But you know what? For me, I just had to be very strategic about my life. I had to be very intentional. You know, so I don't know about you. I know a lot of us are in the university. But if you don't come to that point where you are adding dates, dates, timelines to your goals, to the things you want to achieve, trust me, you still keep postponing them. You know, I've laid this foundation. I've talked about discovering yourself. You know, I've talked about planning, being intentional, you know, taking your life into your hands. How do you do that? It's not easy, trust me. Especially even with this generation, with the social media, running you guys crazy <laughs> all of us crazy because almost all of us we are addicted to our phones i mean even my husband's already realizing that you you are, you are addicted to your phone i post you know i write a lot so sometimes i'll hide behind I'm, I'm posting but we are almost all of us we are almost addicted you know in the midst of this social media hype in the event of technology we have all the toys gadgets and all that how can you be able to tell yourself, I want to be intentional. I want to take my life into my hands and not allow social media to take more than half of your day. More than, I mean, I know a lot of young people that will spend just scrolling and looking at other people's picture. 
And the people you're looking at, they're actually making money. The day I realized that one of my friends, Toyo Baby, makes a lot of money by just posting, I just said, I'm done. I'm not watching you guys again. If I'm not going to make money, I can just watch you, like you a bit, and run off. But to spend hours watching people that are making money by posting, I was done. You need to become intentional in the midst of the madness, in the midst of so many distractions. You need to come to that point where you're telling yourself, I have to take my life into my hands and make my life worth living. How do you do that? Know your why. It's, it also goes back to discovering yourself, asking who am I, key questions. The moment, I, I believe, you know, this is something I know with this generation. Forgive me, I'm still going to be talking about teenagers because they are the ones I'm very used to. And this generation is called Generation Z. The Generation Z, they are very curious. We are all very curious. Even us, even adults, we are very curious. If you tell someone, don't do this, they're asking you, why, don't, why, do you, why are you asking me not to do that? If you know your why, if you know why you want to do something or you don't want to do something, it's going to help you to become very intentional. Number one thing that knowing your why helps you achieve is you will know your values. This society is, um, I don't want to use a wrong word, but we are losing it. And if you don't set your own values for yourself, trust me, you are going to be misled. I mean adults. I know of a friend who is a social drinker. He just drinks when there are so many people. He doesn't drink. In his church, they don't even know he drinks. But because he just wants to few belongs, he, he, you know, I mean, an adult, I'm not talking about a teenager. If you don't set values for yourself, if you don't set standards for yourself, you are just going to go with the flow, with the trends, with the pop culture, with the styles. We have it, I mean, we are influenced by so many things on our Instagram, on Facebook, on Snapchat. If the likes of Bob Lewski can be, you know, influencing a lot of our young people, then you need to you need to wake up and set. I mean, even adults. I see adults following him and writing very things, and I'm wondering, are you guys crazy? You have to set values for yourself. Understand what you believe in. Not everybody's, you know, the Lindy Cage's thing happened. Forgive me, I'm mentioning names, but, you know, I don't know your own value, but for me, it's not right. I had to put up a post, on, and I told my daughter, you would treat me right. You can't go and get pregnant out of wedlock and expect me to say, well done, no. At age 15, I wrote down those things, and I remember that at 25, I saw, somehow stumbled on that um, you know, diary. And I realized I've exceeded. I mean, I've achieved everything I wrote on that diary, everything, and even more. And I had to do more, write more things. And me being in politics today was not part of the plan. But you know what? When you are in line, when you are intentional, so many things fall in place, even Jara. Even Jara. So set your priorities. It, it just helps you become very focused and very driven responsibilities. A lot of our young people don't even realize that we are responsible. The decisions you take today, you will bear the grudge, you will bear the consequences. You know, I know of a lot of my classmates in school, they will say, I'm not passing because my parents are not giving me money. My parents did not give me money. I mean, uh, my parents were teachers and they were old for years, you know, for months, and going to school was, was a struggle. But at that age, I told myself I was going to be very, very, very responsible for my decisions, for the actions I take today. I drank Gary and Abso like crazy until Gary started drinking me. It was that bad. I just, you know, because I could only do one meal, one proper meal a day. But I had to tell myself I was going to be responsible for the decisions I took that time. If I say, okay, my parents are not giving me enough money, let me just go and start, you know, following men and be doing compromising and doing all manner of things. Who was going to bear the consequences more? So I had to tell myself, I will be responsible. The decisions I'm taking today, it may be hard. It may be very hard, but you know what? I would endure. And that was when I came up with this, you know, with this, um, are you timing me? I want to know how many minutes do I have? Three minutes. Okay, so I'm rounding off. And I, I came up with, it, with this quote for myself. I say, play now, pay later. And if I pay now, I will play later. Trust me, I am balling. A lot of my mates, yeah, a lot of my mates are still hovering and looking, wondering. But at that stage, they were busy just compromising because they couldn't, you know, you sleep with a lecturer. I, my lecturer refused to, you know, insisted I must sleep with him. And I said, you see this certificate? It's not a do or die. I can just 
forget it. And to, I've never used my certificate. So I'm talking to someone, maybe you have, you're just wondering, okay, they are trying to persuade me to sleep with them. You can find out you may end up not even using it. Don't compromise. Be responsible for the decisions you are taking today. Trust me, you are going to answer for them in a few years from now. Your season, what are your season? You know, you should understand the times and the season. If you understand that, it helps you to just package yourself very well. When it's time for you to just be content, in fact, it's always good to be content, but when it's time for you to just manage yourself, manage yourself, the Bible says there's time for everything. When you know your season, you'll be able to know how to handle yourself. Know your limits. A lot of our young people just go off because you're seeing your friends doing, going this way, you just want to go with them. If you do that, you're going to end up killing yourself. You need to know your limits, know the things that works for you. I've seen a lot of young people who are into drugs. They are struggling to come out, they are addicted. Why? They were pressured into doing that. And some of their friends that have even lured them into it, they have stopped. I know if a girl, she's 18, her uncle that got her, she started smoking at 12, her uncle that got her into that, he has stopped. But she saw her, two of her friends, they have OD'd. You know what I mean by OD'd, like overdosed. And she's struggling to stop. And it's just because she didn't know her limits. She just you know, saw her uncle, her, young, her elder brother smoking, and she just joined them. As a young person, you need to understand your life is different from even your twin. Your life is very different. The moment you tell yourself, I'm going to be responsible for my decisions that I take today, I'm going to know my limits and know the things that work for me. I am going to be responsible. I'm going to set my priorities right. I am going to own up and say, I, I will be intentional about my decisions. I will be intentional about the things I am doing today. Trust me, the moment you come to that point where you are intentional, you want to plan yourself every day, even what you say. Even the things you say, even the Bible said there's power in our spoken word. The things you say, you have to be very intentional about them. Because if you say, I'm dead, trust me, you will start dying. If you say, I am wealthy in the, in the midst of lack, it will happen. I told you how I was drinking, Gary, but I kept telling myself, I'm going to endure because I know where I'm heading to. So I want to encourage you, whatever you, you think, you know, you may think I'm talking to teenagers, but as young people, I want you to also start living intentional, and it will help us, you know, avoid some of the social vices that we are experiencing now. Thank you so much.